A serial killer is conventionally defined as a person who murders three or more people in a period of over a month, with a cooling down time between murders. Serial killers often lack empathy and guilt, most often becoming egocentric individuals. They are classified as psychopaths. Joel Rifkin, also known as Joel the Ripper, was born on January 20, 1959. Joel Rifkin is an American serial killer convicted of the murder of nine women. Although it is believed he killed 17 drug-addicted prostitutes from 1989 to 1993 in New York City, he was sentenced for 200-plus years in prison. Rifkin's birth mother was a 20-year-old college student, and his biological father was a 24-year-old college student. He was adopted by a loving upper-middle-class Long Island couple when he was three weeks old. His adoptive father was Benjamin Rifkin, and his adoptive mother was Jean. The family welcomed Rifkin's adopted baby sister, Jan, three years later, and they moved to New York, where they settled. He was nice and friendly, but very shy. He struggled to make friends, and though he had an IQ of 128, he performed poorly academically. Joel Rifkin struggled because he had dyslexia. Unfortunately, no one diagnosed him with a learning disability, so they could get him help. He was very slow and awkward, earning him the nickname Turtle. He was bullied by his schoolmates. Despite everything, Rifkin tried to fit in. He joined many sports teams and was often excluded by teammates. No one would accept him, no matter how hard he tried. Eventually, he gave up trying to fit in and preferred to be alone. As time went on, anger was going on within him. He then became interested in true crimes. When he was in high school, his parents gifted him a car. He started to drive around and pick up prostitutes. As this was time and money-consuming, he ended up quitting college. Rifkin's father was not happy about this. Rifkin felt as if he had failed his father, who was a successful man. In 1986, his father was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He was unable to cope with the illness, and after a year of pain and suffering, in 1987, he committed suicide. Rifkin was shattered by his father's death and began using prostitutes as a distraction. Rifkin committed his first murder in 1989, killing a woman in his home. During the fight for her life, Heidi bit his right arm hard, causing an injury. He then dismembered her body, removing her teeth and fingertips, putting her head in a paint can, and then leaving the paint can in the woods of a southern New Jersey golf course and her legs farther north in New Jersey. The identification of Heidi Balch was made difficult by the fact that, although she had not been seen since 1989, she had been reported missing by her aunt in 2001. Balch was a prostitute and a user of drugs. She was known as Susie in her work circle. The search of the victim took the investigators to New Jersey and finally led to Heidi Balch, but she was just the first of many who fell victim to Rifkin. A year later, the serial killer took his next victim. Julie Blackbird was invited by Rifkin at his home when his mother left the town. He beat her with a wooden table leg and strangled her to death before dismembering her body as well. Since dismembering and scattering Susie's remains had worked well for him before, he decided to do the same again. He cut her up, put her body parts in buckets, and then covered them with concrete before lowering buckets into New York's East River. Rifkin also admitted he had briefly considered raping Julie post-mortem, but the very thought of it disgusted him. At this point, he was enjoying doing so. On the 31st of July, 1991, Barbara Jacobs, a prostitute, he slept with her. When she was sleeping, Rifkin used the opportunity to attack Barbara with the same table leg that he used to kill Julie Blackbird. She tried to defend herself, but he hammered continuously onto her. He then strangled her, put her body into a bag and cardboard box, before dumping her into the Hudson River. Her body was found only hours later, 
even though there were clear signs that she was beaten and strangled to death. Authorities ruled that she had died because of a drug overdose. Rifkin ended up starting his own landscaping business soon after, where he used the job site as a place to help store the bodies of his victims until he was ready to dispose of them properly. His final victim was Tiffany Bresciani. Rifkin strangled her and then drove the body to his mother's home. He then wrapped the body and then placed it in a wheelbarrow in the garage for three days. On the 28th of June, 1993, Rifkin decided that he had waited long enough and it was time to dispose of the body. With Tiffany in the bed of his truck, he was on his way to dump his final victim, headed towards Melville's Republic Airport via the Southern State Highway when troops noticed his truck lacked a rear license plate. Instead of pulling over, Rifkin led authorities on a high-speed chase, which ended in Mineola, New York, when he crashed his truck into a pole, which was ironically right in front of the courthouse where he was later to stand trial. When police approached the vehicle, there was a stench hailing from the back of the truck, and it was the body of Tiffany Bresciani, a prostitute and dancer. Rifkin then confessed, to 17 murders. He gave the names, dates, details, and locations while showing no emotion or regret. After his horrifying confession, a search of his family home uncovered 228 trophies Rifkin had taken from his victims, along with blood and human matter on various tools. The items found in his home, such as driving license, medication, photographs, jewelry, purses, wallets, the missing persons database. Police were confidently able to confirm and identify 15 of Rifkin's 17 victims. The next day, he pleaded not guilty before being sentenced on May 9, 1994. He was sentenced to 25 years to life for murder. He ended up pleading guilty to two more murders and received two additional consecutive 25 to life terms. Finally, Joel Rifkin was sentenced to 203 years to life in prison for his murders. He is currently housed in the Clinton, New York Correctional Facility, and if he behaves himself, he will be eligible for parole in 2197, aged at 238 years old. So, are criminals born or made? Are serial killers a product of nature or nurture? Many serial killers are survivors of early childhood trauma of some kind, physical or sexual abuse, family dysfunction, emotionally distant or absent parents. As a consequence of this trauma, they suppress their emotional response. They never develop their emotions or learn appropriate responses to trauma, which is why they behave like this. Serial killers often are loners who fear relationships and seek control to destroy other people. So before humiliating or bullying anyone else, we should think twice. That's all for today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, or hit the bell icon to be notified of our next videos, and I will see you in the next one.